Good afternoon. This is the British Broadcasting Service speaking to you from the Walton Station in the Commune of London. Here are the afternoon headlines for Thursday, the 2nd of June, 1955. At the People's Superior Court in the Commune of London, Mr. Edward Windsor was today convicted of treachery against the state and has been sentenced to death by firing squad. In County Antrim, in the recently reunited province of Ulster, the United Loyalist Front, at the direction of their terrorist leader Basil Brooke, have claimed responsibility for the assassination of six Gardaí by means of incendiary bomb. Elizabeth Windsor, the niece of the aforementioned traitor Edward Windsor, along with her husband Philip Mountbatten and the pair's two young children, today left the British Union state from Liverpool docks for the Kingdom of Canada. The President of the United States, Mr Eisenhower, is reported to have spoken angrily last evening at a White House press conference in reference to the British Union state. Although details remain to be confirmed, the President is alleged to have threatened to sever all diplomatic ties with this Republic unless the monarchy is restored. Mr Eisenhower is said to have called last September's referendum a scam, a farce and altogether unbelievable. The news in examination. The trial of Mr Edward Windsor began this morning at two minutes past eight o'clock at the People's Superior Court. The former monarch of the former United Kingdom was charged with treachery against the state for his alleged involvement in the so-called Mosley Rising of April. Although he spoke out and interrupted the presiding judge more than seven times during the morning's proceedings, complaining of the trial's illegitimacy, Mr. Windsor struggled to explain the ejaculation he had uttered upon his extradition from the French Republic, so what if I did? April's attempted coup saw the deaths of some 653 men and women, as failed politician Oswald Mosley attempted to restore Mr. Windsor to his former position of power and to install himself as the other's Prime Minister. Shortly after 11 o'clock, the courtroom heard magnetic tape recordings of telephone conversations between the now deceased Mr. Mosley and Mr. Windsor, recorded secretly by a member of the letter's staff. This brought the trial to a speedy conclusion, with the People's Jury returning a unanimous guilty verdict before a quarter to twelve. The judge, Mr. Norman Clark, then handed down the mandatory sentence to all those convicted of treachery against the state as set down by the People's Governing Council. Death by firing squad. The British Broadcasting Service is glad to report that this event will be carried precisely one month from today by both BBS Radio and Television. Responsibility for the assassination last night of six Gardaí, members of the police service of the Irish Republic, was claimed this morning by the United Loyalist Front. The violent attack in County Antrim which killed also the wife and three children of one of the as yet unnamed six men, was perpetrated by means of incendiary bomb, as the group met one another for an evening of what was supposed to have been frivolity and music. None of the home's occupants survived. The ULF, the terrorist organisation headed by Mr Basil Brook, the former Prime Minister of the illegitimate colonial state, issued a statement in the early hours of this morning. It reads in part... As long as there is a loyalist, Protestant majority in Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland lives on. The Northern Irish people will not, therefore, submit to Republican policing, Republican law and Republican government. And as such, all forces of the Republican state active in our country will be forcibly repelled. Mr Brooke has continually rejected the fact that the Northern Irish state was dismantled this past February, with the six occupied counties being returned to the rightful governance of Taoiseach Costello. Last evening's incendiary attack, 
the fire from which is reported to have spread to neighbouring houses and is still not yet out, comes upon the heels of last month's shooting of the Irish Minister for External Affairs, Liam Cosgrave, as he visited the six reunited counties. Mr Cosgrave was buried last Wednesday. Elizabeth Windsor, her husband Philip Mountbatten, and the pair's two young children, Charles and Anne, have today departed from Liverpool docks for the Kingdom of Canada. Mrs Windsor, the former Queen of the former United Kingdom, attempted to speak to the assembled crowds just before she boarded the Canadian steamer, but found herself drowned out by boos and jeers, which, sources present indicate, emanated primarily from dock workers. When stones and fragments of glass were thrown, one fist-sized projectile striking Mr. Mountbatten in the shoulder, the ragtag collective made a hasty exit, ascending the gangway on the double. The steamer departed on time, and ought to arrive at the port of Halifax in Nova Scotia by Tuesday. Mrs. Windsor and her family are still perceived as royalty in the Kingdom of Canada, with the government of that nation refusing to abide by the British Executive Council's dissolution declaration of January, which directed that all former colonies and dominions of what was the British Empire ought to follow the new British example and throw off the shackles of monarchy. In place of freeing themselves, the capitalist government of the Canadian Kingdom has made every preparation to welcome the Windsors, from preparing their official dwelling at Rideau Hall to paving the way for the dismissal of the Governor-General. In further opposition to the dissolution declaration, the Kingdom of Canada is reported to have sent representatives to both New Zealand and to the Commonwealth of Australia, ostensibly to discuss the prospect of federal union, with Mrs Windsor as the new nation's head of state. In response to the Windsor's migration, the President of the British Executive Council, Mr Bevan, expressed sorrow that the family could not find solidarity and comradeship in the new British Union state, and live as does every other citizen, opting instead for a life of privilege and undeserved wealth. The American president, Mr. Eisenhower, is reported to have spoken with anger in his voice at last night's White House press conference, when asked of the relations between his country and the British Union state. Although details are as yet few and far between, Mr. Eisenhower is said to have slammed his hand against the lectern and to have said as follows, I'll have no dealings with any communist, even if they're British. As I see the matter, they've forced out their legitimate head of state, and unless she's back within the month, I don't see why we should have any diplomatic dealings with them. Mr. Eisenhower, sources say, then spoke at length on the nature of September's referendum, terming it a scam, a farce, and altogether unbelievable. President of the Executive Council, Bevan, has not replied to our request for comment, but sources close to the People's Governing Council have suggested that her ambassador to the United States may soon be recalled. And the weather? There is to be a mixture of sun and cloud across much of England this afternoon, rain and showers in the Scottish Highlands, with southern Scotland receiving low cloud, with drizzle blanketing much of Wales. The temperatures in the English nation should not exceed 70 degrees, 65 in the Scottish nation and 60 in the Welsh nation. This is the British Broadcasting Service. May we be blessed with liberty and comradeship.